Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The ramp up in load shedding amid intense port congestion is a reminder of the consequences of maladministration and corruption at key state companies. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the outlook. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. This week is surely a reminder that South Africa has some way to go to truly tackle its power crisis. Yes, you know, over a period earlier, a couple of months ago, it looked like issues were easing at Eskom. But we always have to remember that Eskom ramps up its maintenance during the summer months. So this is always a precarious time as maintenance ramps, uh, ramps up. And also there's, uh, when it gets hotter, some of the power stations, especially the dry cooled one, have a, don't produce at their full nameplate capacity. So there's a, sometimes a double whammy of lower production and higher maintenance. And then if you add the unreliability of the coal fleet, which we all know about, there can be these, these periods that we dip back into quite intense periods of load shedding. Stage four again this week. And the, the crucial point here is I think that we've been very slow still in dealing with, uh, in introducing the non Eskom supply. So there's been a lot of focus and attention on maintaining Eskom. Uh, we've seen eventually Kuburg Unit 1 returning to service after a very, very long 11-month uh, uh, extended maintenance. It was supposed to be far shorter than that. But, uh, and we've had the Kusile plants coming back uh, using temporary stacks. But it's, it can't all be about putting those, uh, all the eggs in the Eskom basket. And still, we, we are seeing private projects going through. We saw a very big one announced by Sasol and El Akid this week. But we really are not seeing the non Eskom supply. And that's where the capital is. That's where uh, uh, the skills are available. Because we know Eskom is no longer allowed because of the bailout that it was received this, earlier this year to actually invest in new generation. So we need to accelerate. Uh, the non Eskom generator supply and still bid window 7 uh, after a massive failure with bid window 6 hasn't been launched yet. It was supposed to be launched in mid-year. The failure of bid window 6 meant that only a thousand megawatts of the 4,200 megawatts that was allocated was, was actually entered a preferred bidder stage. We haven't even seen those projects reach financial close. So there's a real lack of urgency and relying on these coal units going f into the future, even though there is this, this, it hasn't been announced, but this intention to extend the life of certain uh, units that were supposed to be retired uh, this year and next year and progressively to 2035, a, a lot of uh, coal capacity has to come off. We really have to ramp up the procurement and the installation of uh, new generation. And I think these episodes of intense load shedding is a reminder to everyone that you know if we rely on this Eskom coal fleet, even with the extensions, I think it's a recipe for ongoing load shedding. We have to get new, fresh megawatts into the system. The addition of crucial grid infrastructure is also lagging. Yes, you know, although Eskom says I've got a, a transmission development plan and it's got this massive. Uh, investment uh, that we're going to be seeing to 2032, about 14,000 kilometres of new power lines, a lot of new, uh, hundreds of new transformers. Uh, you know, it's very much back end loaded. So Eskom says it's got money for the first three years. But if you look at the first three years, it's actually not a lot of investment into new grid capacity. And we can see that's already putting some sort of a break on the introduction of new um, private capacity, as well as IPP that are putting into the, the public procurement programs. I mean, that was the reason why those projects during, the wooden projects during bid window six weren't uh, progressed at a preferred bit of stage because Eskom uh, didn't have any capacity to absorb it onto their grid. Although, you know, with a bit of a different grid optimization plan and using curtailment, it's clear they could have, but they didn't. So that leaves a lot of projects that should be in, you know, underway and that we should be starting to see some of those, that capacity coming in the system basically sitting on the sidelines. So it's a real problem, given what I said earlier about the lack of fresh megawatts coming into the system. 
but also the, the, the hockey stick curve nature of the transmission plan is a big worry. There has been some urgency, but there needs to be far more urgency shown to bring in private capital, private skills, and different procurement models for the grid sooner rather than later. And I know Eskim is saying, well, we're doing what we can. We're putting in, a, we're using EPC models. We're using owners, engineers to try and boost our capacity. But it's simply not at the pace and scale that we need again. So I think this week, load shedding is always the reminder. But uh, it needs to be a consistent urgency around procurement of new generation and adding much needed grid and distribution grid, not just the transmission grid. Both of those are lagging. The situation at Transnet is also dire. Yeah, the, the, it's really focused currently around the ports, um, both container and non-container vessels anchored outside of our ports. Close to 100, some of these container vessels are sitting outside Durban, our main container port, for over two weeks now. It's, it's, a, it's a real problem. Um, the shipping lines have been imposing surcharges, um, which basically is eventually passed on to us as the consumer, uh, where everything just becomes more expensive because of that. Uh, it's a reputational issue for South Africa uh, as a trading nation. It's a massive question mark of a South Africa's status as a, a gateway to Africa, which we basically, uh, the rest of the, the region, the landlocked, countries and the regions are having to find different ways to send out whatever they send out. Copper from Zambia, cobalt from DRC, it's, it's a real problem um, that the trading system is, is clogged. And the, as we know, the rail uh, network is just not functioning as it, should, uh, as it should and hasn't for some time. And there's no immediate um, sign that that can be turned around because of the, the lack of locomotives on the railway system, particularly the ones that are standing uh, um, idle because of a lack of spares, because there hasn't been settlements around, particularly the Chinese supplier locomotives. So it's not just a port issue, it's a port and rail uh, issue, and it's causing major problems on the road network. So it's really dire, and, uh, and I think it is receiving quite a lot of attention, but at the moment uh, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult situation for people that want to trade through South Africa. Is there any prospect of relief on the ports and rail systems? Well, as with the power crisis, we have uh, a crisis committee, a logistics crisis committee, but a lot of these things will take time. The port, there's such a backlog uh, on the rail and port maintenance and investment. So the, the, the transport uh, port terminals um, needs to put in massive amounts of new equipment, needs to buy a lot of new equipment. And uh, there have been issues around, you know, the PFMA, which is, which governs the way um, state-owned companies procure. Uh, Eskim's received a lot of exemptions, and now we see Transnet received a lot of exemptions, but still, the lead time to buy these straddle carriers and rubber tie gantry systems, you know, they, they, they are long lead times. So, no, there's probably no immediate relief other than managing the system uh, to use, uh, to direct vessels to other terminals that maybe are multi-purpose, uh, to, um, you know, just manage the congestion at the moment using what you've got. So, no, there isn't really any short-term relief in sight. And the official stance, for instance, at Durban Container Terminal is that the backlog is only, only going to get cleared by the 29th of February next year. You know, that's the sort of uh, backlog. We've got sh ships waiting, you know, so, um, uh, as I said, two weeks, but some longer at Anchorage. So the, the costs of that to the economy and to the reputation, as I mentioned earlier, are significant. And uh, I think this is with us for some time. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.